Hello everyone, it's Saturday, November 17th edition of Living Life. You know, zeal, excitement, this kind of thing can be amplified in numbers. And especially right now, as we are looking at some of the things that are going on in sports. Come on, Dodgers and the World Series, that's exciting stuff. Hyunjin Ryu, that's some exciting stuff. You know, um, there is a difference, though, in excitement and zeal in numbers. I'll give you an example. When I'm watching the Dodgers sitting down on my couch, even if Hyunjin Ryu does a crazy strikeout, I'm like, yeah, that's cool, man, great. Sometimes I get a little bit more excited than that. But when you're actually at Dodger Stadium with all the people eating the hot dogs and eating the popcorn and having the heartburn and getting all excited with all the people, there's an electricity and an energy that is beyond comprehension. And in the same way, that was what was happening here in the, our passage, the people of God, along with Asa's leadership, they're coming together. There's a lot of energy, and they're about to do some great things for God's kingdom. Let's take a look at that passage today. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verses 8 through 19. When Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Azariah son of Oded the prophet, he took courage. He removed the detestable idols from the whole land of Judah and Benjamin and from the towns he had captured in the hills of Ephraim. He repaired the altar of the Lord that was in front of the portico of the Lord's temple. Then he assembled all Judah and Benjamin and the people from Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon who had settled among them, for large numbers had come over to him from Israel when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. They assembled at Jerusalem in the third month of the fifteenth year of Asa's reign. At that time they sacrificed to the Lord seven hundred head of cattle and seven thousand sheep and goats from the plunder they had brought back. They entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their ancestors, with all their heart and soul. All who would not seek the Lord, the God of Israel, were to be put to death, whether small or great, man or woman. They took an oath to the Lord with loud acclamation, with shouting and with trumpets and horns. All Judah rejoiced about the oath because they had sworn it wholeheartedly. They sought God eagerly, and He was found by them. So the Lord gave them rest on every side. King Asa also deposed his grandmother Makah from her position as queen mother because she had made a repulsive image for the worship of Asherah. Asa cut it down, broke it up, and burned it in the Kidron Valley. Although he did not remove the high places from Israel, Asa's heart was fully committed to the Lord all his life. He brought into the temple of God the silver and gold and the articles that he and his father had dedicated. There was no more war until the 35th year of Asa's reign. So today's passage comes from 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verses 8 to 19. And let me give you a little context here before we begin. So um, we see Asa, he is continuously leading the people of God, and now there is great momentum. And right before the mo momentum, Oded, the prophet, comes and speaks into Asa from the Spirit of God. He speaks word of instruction into Asa, clarifies what God's desire and his heart is, gives him a vision, and calls Asa to strongly lead with the presence and the love and the instructions of God. So that is the context of where we are today. And there is great, great joy. Um, and there's a lot of excitement that is going on here. Now, one of the things uh, that's about to happen is not only Asa, but the people all together are about to join Asa and do great things for God especially in the area of cleansing. OK, 
decay and restoration. So I want to kind of highlight uh, a few verses here, uh, especially in verse 8. It says that Asa heard these words, the prophecy of Azariah, um, son of Oded, the prophet, he took courage. He removed the detestable idols from the whole land of Judah and Benjamin and from the towns he had captured in the hills of Ephraim. He repaired the altar of the Lord that was in front of the portico of the Lord's temple. So he is not only doing the restoration of God's altar, which is super important, there is a reestablishment now of worship. There is a reestablishment now of identity, reestablishment now of activity that the people of God need to engage in. And right before that, so that that can happen, there is destruction of all things that are not of God, especially the altars, especially the things of foreign gods, Asa is having the people of God just destroy. How amazing is that? How exciting is that? There is definitely a spiritual momentum and zeal and power that is going on right now as the Spirit is covering the people of Israel and they're getting excited as a people of God doing the things that they know that God wants them to do. Now, it's not an exciting thing. Let me ask you guys, like, how many of you guys feel spiritually down? Or how many of you guys feel spiritually challenged at times? Or maybe spiritually discouraged, weak? Mm, some of us feel that way. You know, oftentimes I, I feel when we're spiritually down, there is some kind of a, a, a lonely journey about that. Meaning, oftentimes when we're spiritually down, we're not being encouraged by people. We're not in the midst of the people of God. Sometimes we're not going to church. We're not in small groups. We're just kind of being defeated, trying to go about it alone. But the text shows us today that all of Judah, tribe of Benjamin, people of Ephraim, and Manasseh, and Simeon, who settled in those areas, they all assembled or or came together it says in verse 10, 10 they assembled at jerusalem in the third month and the 15th year of asses reign they came together one of the things that i really believe that strengthens us is when the people of god comes together in the name of god saying you are my brother you are my sister i need to be with you i need to strengthen you i need to encourage you you know, some people say, oh, I don't like church. I don't like going to church. Some people don't even go to church. Uh, and I'm talking about Christians. I'm not just talking about non-believers because they're discouraged by the church or something happened in the church. But let me tell you, you're just opening yourself up if you don't go to church for Satan's attack and you're not going to be empowered. There's not going to be spiritual zeal. At church, we should be coming together to be strengthened. And how... Do they become strengthened? First and foremost, they're worshiping together, the text says. They come to the Lord. They're, you know, uh, bringing sacrifices. Um, they're coming together and worshiping God at His altar. Together, they're giving glory to God and thanking God in the midst of the things that are broken around them. You know, right now, in this context, Israel didn't, it's not, everything is not figured out. There's still a lot of things that they need to rebuild. But even in the midst of their struggles, they're coming together and saying, we're going to worship God. We're going to love on God. We're going to come together as a people of God, to do the things that God wants us to do. And as they are worshiping together, the Spirit is binding them and energizing them together. That's what we see. And they're devoted as they worship. It says here that they agreed with one another that they would seek the Lord together with all their hearts. Together, they're not only worshiping, but they're making commitments together. You know, that's why it's so important for us to have small groups. It is important for us to have accountability. It is very, very important for us to come together and do these things so that we may build spiritual zeal.
So today we talked about spiritual zeal, you know, spiritual energy, having spiritual strength, and that that comes often through us meeting together as brothers and sisters in Christ, whether that is through small groups or whether that is through Sunday service, whatever it, it is that we come together as a people of God and that we strengthen one another. You know, I know that it, that's very tough sometimes, you know, in our modern world, sometimes we don't make it to our small groups or our gatherings or our meetings at church because of traffic or sometimes we're very tired from work. I understand all that, but we got to break through those things, uh, as, especially as we understand that when we come together, you know, the spirit is moving in our midst. And I think we need to really understand that and, and grab onto that. You know, right now, our deacons, because they're tired from work, they're having a hard time gathering for even our meetings. So I sometimes do it online. Whatever it takes, we need to meet together and allow the Spirit to move. So with that, I would like to pray for us. Father, we thank you so much for this important lesson. I know that it is very important for us to gather together. And when we do that in your name and we seek your face, you strengthen us and you give us, Lord God, the energy to continue to move on and to do the things that are of your heart and of your will. I pray that today each and every one of us will commit ourselves from, for, for, from, uh, for uh, and towards meeting one another and being strengthened by you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This program is produced by the listeners of the audience. 